My name is John Hainsworth. I'm a medical oncologist. Uh, I've been involved in clinical research for many years, and I'm currently the chief scientific officer at the Sarah Cannon Research Institute in Nashville. So cancer of the kidney is approximately the 10th most common kind of cancer in the U.S. It's not nearly as common as, as the, the big ones like lung, breast, colon, and prostate cancer, but it is a significant health problem uh, in the U.S. And, and around the world. Unlike some of the other cancers, there, there isn't any known precipitating factor or, or environmental factor like smoking and lung cancer that, that leads one to get more kidney cancer. So it really is sort of a random event that, uh, you, that you really can't predict in, in, in patients. Because the kidney itself doesn't have a lot of pain fibers, it's also one that can grow to substantial size without causing much in the way of symptoms, which is a problem for early diagnosis. Uh, the most common symptom of kidney cancer is, is bleeding in the urine, uh, usually without any pain. So that's always a sign that you know, should be taken seriously and reported to the doctor and, and had, had a medical workup. Uh, uh, and and that's, that's the most common sign of localized kidney cancer. As the cancer grows, it can either touch the, the lining or the capsule of the kidney, which does have pain fibers, and then you start to get symptoms or it can grow into the surrounding areas around the kidney, or it can spread to other areas. Most kidney cancers are found when they're still localized in the kidney. So most of them are pretty well treated. Approximately between 60 and 70% of patients who get kidney cancer are cured surgically with having the cancer removed, uh, the cancer and the kidney removed. Uh, so that's a pretty big percent, percentage of cancer that basically that's the end of it. You have the operation and, and it's done. One thing that's happened recently too to make diagnosis a little earlier is that actually a lot of kidney cancers nowadays are diagnosed at an asymptomatic or when they're not symptomatic yet by people having CT scans for other problems. So it's an incidental finding they're small, they're still asymptomatic, those are actually treated uh, quite well. Um, there are actually several kinds of kidney cancer. The most common is called clear cell cancer. Uh, it, it accounts for about 75% of all the cases and probably is the worst actor as well. Some of the other kinds that are more rare are very, very slow growing and they're almost always cured by surgery alone. So it's been the cancers that are beyond the, the surgery or recur by, by coming back somewhere else in the body after surgery that, that have been the really big problems in kidney cancer. For a long time, there really wasn't much treatment that worked. Um, some of the drugs that we use that have been quite successful in other cancers, some of the chemotherapy drugs just didn't have any any use in kidney cancer. They just didn't work. So it's only been recently that there's been a tremendous amount of interest in kidney cancer because now in the last few years we've gone from zero drugs approved by the FDA for kidney cancer now to seven. So all of these drugs have been new kinds of drugs, not the traditional chemotherapy drugs, but so-called targeted drugs and it's been found that there are certain targets in kidney cancer that are critical to that cancer being able to grow and spread and survive. And if you block those things with these particular drugs, um, the cancer shrinks. We still don't have curative treatment, but we've gone from having no treatment to having six to seven drugs that can be used. And usually what's happening is they're using, used one after the other. So one works for a while, the cancer starts to get active, patients are switched to the next one, et cetera. And, and often that can, can, can help patients for a, a quite a long period of time. Um, most of these cancer, most of the new drugs are related to blocking 
new blood vessel formation, which is essential to cancers, and particularly kidney cancers, as they grow. So if they can't get new blood supply, they can't grow bigger because the new cells can't get blood and you know, all cells need blood to survive and to grow. So that's the, that's the mechanism of these drugs that have recently got approved by the FDA. Essentially all of the drugs are oral drugs, they're taken daily at home, uh, and the side effects of most are, are, are much less than what we traditionally think about uh, with, our, with our typical chemotherapy drugs. The future is good as well for this. There are a number of other drugs that work entirely differently than the ones we have that are in development now that have already shown that they're going to be active in kidney cancer uh, and, and just need some more information to, to prove that uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt before they get FDA approval. So we're expecting additional uh, improvements and benefits within the next couple of years.